This league has been absolutely insane for currency. I've actually lost track about how many divines I've dropped and spent, but it's well over 50. In previous leagues, I've made about 18 divines in the first week. I made 20 divines in a single day last week. In this one, I'm going to step through exactly how I'm making currency from a strategy point of view, but also something I just didn't know about. And once I found out about it, that has increased my currency making potential no end. It's insane. This video is going to be incredibly fast paced with very little waffles, so don't skip ahead too much or you might miss something crucial. So why is this league more profitable than any we've had before? To understand that, we need to understand the three key things on maps that determine drops. The first is item quantity. The more item quantity, the more things will drop from packs of monsters that you kill. More things you drop, the more chance of getting currency, divines and all the rest of it. Second, item rarity. This will determine if that thing you've just dropped will be a unique, or rare, or magic. It also affects currency on certain mobs. On those mobs, if you drop a chaos, it's a chance to be upgraded to something like an exalt or a divine. And the last is monster pack size. Monster pack size controls the number of mobs in each pack. And the number of mobs you have in a map scales multiplicatively with item quantity. More mobs, more drops, equals much more loot. The league mechanic allows you to scale two of those mods and adds a third. So as we run the league mechanic, we get three different kinds of wisps. The most important wisp to get, in my opinion, is the primal wisps, or the blue ones. This wisp greatly increases the chance of monsters in your map to drop raw currency over other items. This is really, really good, because if you drop raw currency, you don't have to trade it away to get actual currency. The next wisp we're going to talk about is the vivid or yellow wisp. This directly scales the item quantity on your map. And therefore, the same number of monsters you had before will drop more items. And finally, we have the purple and wild wisps, which increase the item rarity on your map, which will help some of those arch nemesis monsters to drop even more divines. So first off, you're going to want to get as many wisps as possible. But beware, the wisps don't just buff your drops. They also buff the difficulty of monsters. And this kind of leaves us with a problem, because most of the characters I've rolled so far just aren't strong enough to fight this level of monster. So I've actually had to put a lot more investment into my characters, literally, as I run a map. I work out what the weakest thing on my character is, and then I go and fix it using the money I've just made. Which means the next time I run it, I've got less chance of dying, less chance of losing XP. But at this point, deaths don't matter to me. The money is just a massive compensator for the fact I'm dying. And I can't believe I'm actually going to say that. But more importantly, I can run the maps faster. The faster I run the maps, the more currency I make, and the whole thing just scales up. It's amazing. Okay, so back to the point. We've got all this scaling now of item quantity, item rarity, and the ability to drop raw currency. The one thing we can't control directly with the league mechanic on the maps is the monster pack size. But we absolutely can influence it through the Atlas passive tree, which is what I'm doing. Bear in mind that this, though, has the added effect of making the maps even more difficult than they were before. So first off, you're going to want to build a really strong character. If you're still on your league starter and it's not particularly strong, you're going to want to roll a new one. Hopefully it's made some currency by now to allow you to do that. I have gone through three builds so far to find the one that's working best for me, and at the moment that is Tornado Shot. Secondly, if you've got a chance to get essences on your map, you want to take that off as much as possible off your tree. Essences are the worst possible thing. I've had essences that take over 15 minutes to kill. It's insane. Not worth it at all. Next, we want to modify our atlas tree to get as much things on there as possible that will increase monster pack size. And you can think of increasing the number of monsters on your map in two ways. One, increasing the monster pack size adds more monsters per pack. The second is just to add more packs to your map. So let's address the first one first, monster pack size. Monster pack size is directly tied to map modifiers, both the number of them and the magnitude of them. So a map with eight modifiers will have far more monster pack size than a map with only four, but also, if those magnitudes of those rolls are bigger, you'll just get more monster pack size. Luckily, your map device has a ton of nodes that give you 2% increased effects of modifiers on your non-unique maps. These are nearly exclusively located on the path across the top of your tree in this big triangle here. There is also a keystone on your map called Wandering Path. This causes notables on your atlas tree to grant nothing, but increases the effect of small passives by 100%. So all those 2% now become 4%. And the passive tree on your atlas works the same way in your passive tree for your character. In that there's notables, there's like the small passives, but there's also the keystones. And the keystones are unaffected. So Wandering Path is here. This is the one you're going to want to get. Now do note that this makes your map so much harder. So do be careful when you roll this on that you have a spare 
orb of unmaking so you can roll it off if you have to. There's another way of increasing the monster pack size and that is this node up here called Growing Hordes. This keystone causes all scarabs you put in your map device not to give what they actually give normally, but to directly increase monster pack size based upon the type of scarab it is, so winged will give you more, rusted will give you lowest. This means that instead of selling scarabs, which I would normally do, I now just keep them and just throw them in my map device when I got some spare ones. Do remember that if you run a four way for legion, you can get that extra one which will allow you to use four scarabs with your map instead of just three. A couple of us in our guild put our splinters together early last week so that we could actually run this in the first week instead of much later in the league. Now for the second item, which is scaling the number of actual packs we have in our map, the best way to do that is to add league mechanics. And the Atlas Passive Tree is designed to do just that. And all the passive notables that normally give us a chance to spawn those in our map are now doubled. I would avoid any past league mechanics that are time based, such as Alva and Breach. The mobs can be much thicker now and that means it takes longer to kill them and sometimes they'll despawn before you can actually kill them. That means no loot at all from those extra monsters which just leads to crying, so do avoid that. Breaking legions out doesn't seem to be a problem so you can leave legion on there. Of course a lot of what I'm saying will depend on your character. It has taken me many days to get my tornado shot to the level where it is today, before that it really struggled. So I think you can see what's happening here, there's a definite pattern. We're just scaling up everything we can to get the maps as juicy as possible. But it doesn't end here. There's also the altars in the maps, and the blue ones are better than the reds this league for this. They allow you to one, directly increase quantity and rarity, but also to allow you to duplicate some drops such as basic currency, which is just silly. That one divine you just dropped is now two. The second thing is now we've juiced these maps up, how do we run them? Because this is going to be very important. And for all you people who hate backtracking, I understand this is probably going to really upset you, but just bear with it. You don't like it, you can shout at me in comments, I don't mind. I will reply though, so expect a heated debate. First things first, as soon as you get in your map, before you do anything else, unless of course there's monsters blocking your path, you want to go straight into the league mechanic. And I want you to really take your time in here. Do not rush it, you want to maximise the wisps you're getting. So really, really carefully find the wisp paths before you just shoot down a path that doesn't have any. And if your starting area doesn't have any wisp paths, just walk around the edge gently, see if any monsters come out. Those monsters tend to be near a path, so if you follow that sort of area, you should get to a path, hopefully. And as I mentioned earlier, prioritize blue over anything else. Now also look out for any glowing orbs in the area. One of these will give you big vision and sort of explode outwards, and the other one will actually give you longer in the area. Okay, so you've done this, you've maximized the amount of wisps, you've got your portal, you come back out. What next? You're going to want to shoot through the map, killing everything, but don't touch any of the league mechanics that have been added. With the exception of Delirium, and that's only if you're a masochist. And whenever it's safe to do so, you're going to want to add any altars that appear. Now, there are two reasons you might not want to do this. One, it's surrounded by packs. Yes, kill those first. You don't want to die trying to do it. And two, some of them will detriment your character massively. Like, I cannot run projectiles shooting random directions, so I will never pick that. Also, avoid any boss ones. Really, you want to go for item quantity and rarity, duplication of drops before anything else. There are, of course, some exceptions. If you happen to be exceedingly lucky and get either Eldridge minions drop divines or regals, you want to pick these. Divine drops from the divine map with this level of quantity is absolutely insane. We dropped 12 divines in a single map with two of us running together. It is literally the most exciting thing you will ever do in Path of Exile. 12 Divines in 5 minutes is just out of this world. Okay, that's strategy. Once we do have all the altars, then it's time to backtrack and do all the lead mechanics and clear the rest of the map. The reason we want to leave this to last is all of the altars increase our quantity and rarity as well, and also duplicate drops. So when we come back now and finish the map, it will be a lot stronger than when we first entered it. It really is worth doing it. The maps I'm mostly running is Mesa, and Jungle Valley. Mesa because it seems to have a propensity to drop a lot of cards as you can see from the beginning of this video. And then Jungle Valley because none of the altars apply to bosses, they're all either to minions or they're to quantity or duplicate, so very efficient. The other reason to run these together is they're connected on the Atlas which means you get a bonus to dropping them on top of your favoured map bonus. So you should always be able to run one of these two. Okay, so that's really all I want to cover with the map strategy. And this is not all my design. I have gone through many, many videos looking at different things that different people are doing, piecing it together and coming up with something that works for me. 
Okay, so next. The thing that I found out that has just changed my world when it comes to currency throughout all leagues. Bulk trading. And not just bulk trading, tools that help with that. So I'm going to go over both of those next. First off, the tool. There is a website called Postack. You will need to link your Path of Exile account to this. I have done that already. What this site does is it will go through your stash tabs, calculate the price of everything that's easy to calculate. So it won't do rare items, but it will do unique and it will do various kinds of currency such as catalysts, harvest stuff, all that stuff will be calculated for you. It will then give you a list to what's going to give you the most money if you trade it. You can then use this to do bulk trading. It also identifies stuff in your stash tabs that you don't think normally are worth any money. It's really eye-opening just using this tool. And the prices are pretty accurate from what I've seen so far. And yes, I'm the kind of person who does check the tools just to make sure they're accurate. And disclaimer, you should too, just in case. Once we know what's worth trading, we can go trade it. And just a side note, I love trading Harvest now. I used to hate it. It used to be so tedious. But now I can make hundreds of chaos with a single transaction. It is just so amazing. So in this example, I've got my vivid harvest juice. There is 3,718 units of it. And the tool tells me this is worth about 100 chaos. Do note that I normally sell in much bigger stacks than this. This is all I had left over. There is actually a big advantage to selling it in bigger stacks. One, people are more likely to trade with you because it's quality of life. They can do one transaction and get everything they need. Two, they're willing to pay more for it because of the sheer convenience factor. If they have to buy a thousand from each player, it's going to take them far longer than just buying 20,000 from you. It will only show up in the bulk trading section of the Path of Exile as well, so you won't get people trying to buy one or two off you. So how do we do bulk trading? It's actually hidden right underneath your nose. There is a special formula that we use in the price box. And the way this works is, so if we take my harvest example, I am going to put in 102 divided by 3713. This means I want 102 of the currency on the right for my 3713 currency on the left. So just transpose the position to the two items and put them on either side of a slash. Now note that this doesn't just work for selling. We can actually buy with this method too. So here I'm going to trade chaos for divines. And the way we do that, we want to buy divines. So the divines on the right, so that goes on the left of the slash. So one divine for 175 chaos. And I'm actually going to put it up a bit because I want a quick sale just to prove the point. The key thing here is we're saving so much time. I'm sure you've all been here. You want to get a divine for your chaos. You ping person after person. Can I buy your chaos? And either you get no response or no, sorry, sold. Instead, you get those people to come to you, give you their divines for your chaos. And it's so much simpler. You don't even have to leave your hideout. If you found this useful, then please tickle that like button. It'll like it a lot. If you disagree with me or really were helped by this video, then leave a comment. And if you want to be extremely divine, then please subscribe. And if you are new to this game and this is going over your head, then you can check out my video on the end game of Path of Exile, which should give you some context. That will be top left right now, and with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. And may the RNG be with you.